Aloha in Aloha Kako. I am Janos Samu, and as a national, I represent uh, the government of the Hawaiian Kingdom, the Hawaiian Independence Alliance, and also the American Friends Service Committee, in other words, the Quakers. First of all, I would like to thank you for flying the flag of Hawaiian independence, solidarity, and sovereignty, or wearing or displaying its symbol. Please continue to do so. How to make Hawaii great again? I know that I have been using the modified slogan of the current American President Donald Trump, but it is not copyrighted anyway, so why not? Besides, his slogan, Make America Great Again, does not apply here. Because our slogan here in Hawaii is that Hawaii is not America and it will never be. And that will not change unless some crazy strong man would dare to push the Hawaiian Islands all the way to the east coast of California shores. So the Americans want their country to prosper. Let them work on it. There is still plenty to do. The Hawaiians, even native, all the ones like me, with howless skin but Hawaiian heart and Hawaiian nationality, should concentrate on our Hawaiian islands. It is a general rule that a challenge with an expected beneficial outcome will motivate people. Yes, this can be a great challenge, but according to the group of native Hawaiians I had talked to last night, they want to take the challenge their way. Setting the goal is not enough. We need to have the idea of working conditions as well, and this idea of working condition is independence. I was asking how they think it would be done best. The answer was typical of Hawaiian thinking. No hate, no cursing, just ho'oponopono. Reasoning and strategy. This is what they said. You know, uncle, it would not be pono to hate or punish all Americans uh, for what their country has done to us in 1893 and thereafter, because those were different people. There are good people in America too, not all of them, but there are plenty. Let all of them uh, be good Americans at home in their country and let them try to make their country great. We will compete with them here in Hawaii, making our country great again, following the traditions of our great Hawaiian kings and queens who united the nation and made education top priority for all. This is how the Hawaiian kingdom became the most literal country in the world in the second half of the 19th century because 97% of its people could write and read, in Hawaiian, of course. When we say we will compete with them, it does not mean that we will follow their footsteps and build sophisticated and expensive weapons while pushing people below the poverty level. That touches a very sensitive question. Why do we have so much military people in Hawaii? They are not defending us because nobody wants to attack Hawaii. And we think that nobody wants to attack America either. The threat their politicians and their government refer to is just a shrewd invention to get their Congress approve more money for their military so that those investing in military items and weapons can line their pockets with more dollars. 
We can have our small standing Hawaiian military for protecting our waters and our shores from piracy. And our young people will serve there by conscription. You see, Americans have only mercenaries who follow orders for money, and their government lies to them that they would be defending their country and takes them to foreign lands to invade and occupy foreign countries. Of course, nobody likes them there, just like no real Hawaiian likes them here either. All those Hawaiians who signed up to join the American military did it only for financial reasons. The American system forced upon them prevented them from getting out of poverty or to get ahead, so they signed up and served the American empire. I posed a new question to them to get back to the subject of competition. How, can't, how could you compete then? And in response, the whole Ho'oponopono strategy came forward again. One of the kupunas said, we would use our hearts and minds, but not like the Americans claimed they did in Iraq with submachine guns and rockets and missiles. Instead, our goal would be to pull everybody together and allow them to make a decent living, which would increase the general happiness of the people. Who cares if the average income in Hawaii is lower than in Japan or in Canada if our people are happy with what they have and don't break their necks to have more? Believe it or not, most Hawaiians don't want to possess more than what they need because our life was always based on self-sustenance for thousands of years. Did you notice that the Americans are doing surveys after survey about silly things, but I don't recall any survey during the past 50 years or so that would have asked them about happiness and about their satisfaction of the people with the current political system. Also, there was no survey about the people's outlook for the future, more precisely, how they picture the future of their country in 10, 20, and 30 years from now. Did you ever think why? My answer is very simple. They are afraid of the answers. They are afraid to find out that the majority of America is unhappy with their political system and with their political leaders. And if the majority is unhappy in a progressive country, changes have to be made to do better for the benefit of the majority. But in their policy, the wish and the happiness of the majority is not important. You see, here too, we would be different. We would ask questions about the satisfaction and the happiness of our people, and we would make changes for their benefits. And the basis of comparison in this competition would be the difference of happiness of our people and the happiness of the people of other countries. But how do you get to that point that people work for the happiness of the entire community, the entire nation? I ask the next question. It will not be simple, another Kupuna answered, because the American capitalist system affected the thinking even of many Hawaiians, which is understandable because of the constant repetition of the Americans boasting, our system is the greatest. Really? Who says that? They are bragging about something that somebody else should be the judge of. It is just boasting because their deeds contradict what they say. Do you really know why they are sanctioning countries which have a different political or economic system and don't think and say what the American government would like to hear? because the Americans became too weak to compete with them, and they want to hurt them desperately, trying to preserve their imagined American superiority. If the Americans either economically and mora morally, uh, that would mean the total collapse, okay, uh, if they competed and, a co and their country with a different political system outperformed the Americans, either economically and morally, 
That would mean the total collapse of the myth that the American system is the best. You see, if the happiness of people in countries with different political systems is honestly compared, the real winner is where more people are happy than in the competing country. This is the real Ho'oponopono competition. Here a retired Kumukula continued. That would come with a total change of the current educational system. We would abandon the current obedience-targeted American educational system that is based on constant measuring and too frequent changes and replace it with the Ho'oponopono system, teaching the children and young people that their obligations to their country and to their nation must be in balance with their rights and not fulfilling their obligations would forfeit some of their rights. We would use the best and most dedicated teachers for this purpose who would be paid well so that they and we can see the results of their work. Education would be free and of utmost importance. This would assure achieving the people achieving that people won't wait for social benefits without fulfilling their obligations to the nation. Medicare, medical care would also be free to the nationals of the independent Hawaii. I had to interrupt here and ask, but Tita, how can Hawaii afford all of this? With convincing smile, the retired teacher said, Mahalo ke akua. Our aina is beautiful, and people will come in here uh, to enjoy it. We will take care of them Hawaiian style, and have jobs and income, and no taxes will go to the United States. Foreigners, including Americans, will need visitors' visas, and they will pay the same fee as America charges for visitors' visas to foreigners. But there will be other light industries here too and very low budget will be needed to maintain our small military. Instead of sanctions, we would sign friendship, cooperation, and defense agreements with countries of our choice. I saw that there were many issues that were not discussed yet, but it was getting late, so I asked my Hawaiian friends, and what about the aloha spirit towards the Americans? The answer was, we will give them a farewell aloha when the last American military person leaves our islands, but we won't say ahui ho. Mahalo, thank you everyone. Mm -hmm.